Hello, this is part three. Okay, let's have a look at the, the last graphs that were made to complete this uh, material. Let's go ahead and uh, I'll walk you through uh, the color uh, graph. One of the main techniques that I use when I'm working with the generator is not to try to use too much gradient maps when you can pick a gradient like this. I don't do that. I prefer using a uniform color where I am able to expose the output color and then use it this way. You know, I can uh, choose uh, any color in the spectrum. So I just send the final texture, of course, through a gradient map in order to uh, convert it from grayscale to color. So it goes into the foreground and it's just to multiply. And that gives us a nice uh, basis to work with. Then just uh, just make a second color pass with the same uh, same technique. Well, this time I didn't choose uh, the multiply blending mode, but the the head sub. And I think it's a curvature, probably a curvature smooth. Yeah, so that comes from the normal. Okay, that's a smooth. Then, of course, a gradient map and our blend at sub blending mode. And here I can choose a color. And the output color is exposed to. Then I blend this one with our first one. And that gives us a second color pass. Here I just uh, wanted to make this darker, so with the soft light. What if I do this instead? Yeah, it's just, uh, I think uh, this darker pass is not needed because if I want uh, it to be uh, a bit darker, I just have to change uh, the base color. So let's uh, get rid of those nodes. It's always good to you know simplify your graph. You often overdo it. So here, I just wanted more contrast. So what did I do? Um, oh well, I took a directional warp. Of course, I don't remember exactly why I did this kind of thing. Why I wrapped the picture a little with a black and white spots one. I blended it with a hat sub and uh, this color. This one is not uh, exposed. So it goes here to a soft light and uh, indeed it gives us something uh, with darker and richer color. Okay, nice. Here I know that I wanted to create some um, some perturbations, some stains. So I just uh, used the soft light once again. The stains are made with uh, just a perlin noise and a multi-directional warp. And uh, in the uh, strength and angle, I just uh, sent the black and white spots one. So that gives us that. Add sub with a color with this color. And uh, I'll uh, increase uh, the opacity to the max and you'll see uh, the effect of this uh, of these stains. This could be uh, exposed because it adds uh, an interesting look, but in my generator for now it's just, uh, I don't know, maybe at 0.2 opacity. Let's try 0.25. I think that's uh, that's all right. We don't need more. Then what do we have? We have a color variation.
which wasn't taking effect because uh, the levels were uh, broken. But other than that, it's just a soft light. Once again, I could have uh, exploded this, but at a 0.3 level, it's all right. So how did I make this color variation? Just use the tile generator, level it a bit, blurred it, divided the size by two, and uh, used a vector warp. This transform was sent to the vector map and in the input, the blur. Then a slow blur grayscale with a crystal, which, I, uh, which is rotated. Then another blur and the levels. That gives us a nice grayscale um, blend of uh, blurry shapes. And that's enough to uh, be used as a color variation. Very important. I'm not sure actually why this was, uh, this was broken. As you can see, I'm just trying to see uh, if it still works at a lower resolution. And it does, so that's all right. The fibers color, yeah, it's just a pass where I wanted to give the wood some very small horizontal uh, short lines that can be found sometimes in uh, in flooring. I call this superficial fibers. You can see heat taking effect here. It's a bit strong. but it's, uh, it's an important one. And I also exposed uh, the color. So it's just uh, directional scratches with a high scale and a mask. All right, simple enough. Then I wanted uh, rounded borders. So just use the um, histogram scan with the planks and pushed the whites to the mask just to keep the interstices. And you know, with a blur and the levels, I have the rounded borders for the planks. Then I, I just have to uh, multiply this with the color and expose the opacity. Oh yes, I think it's here, rounded borders. We'll see it here, taking effect. And in fact, it, it also affects the normal, the maybe not the roughness, but the normal, the AO, every map. And of course the color. Then I wanted to create uh, joints, just maybe to, you know to bridge the gap when you have a very black interstice. Can be nice to have uh, colored joints. In this case, it's very uh, very light, and maybe the max lighten is not the best choice. We'll see. We'll see that in the joints height. Well, we don't see much. Let me try to change the blending mode to add linear dodge. Yeah, we see it uh, a bit better. Maybe I should uh, use the levels. The reverse is maybe not the best option. So if I lower the planks width, yeah, now the joints uh, show.
I think the joints can be useful when, you, of course, you have a lower uh, a lower amount of uh, planks. It's nice to have some some joints to make the planks stick together uh, visually. Okay, so the rounded borders and the joints are covered. Now the dust. It's in the color section. The dust in this case is just color. Right, we can see it uh, a little. The way that you do the dust is not really important. In my case, just use the stains that are here as a basis. We have a vector warp grayscale and a directional warp. Then just a levels, a blur, and a gradient. So in this case, uh, yes, I use the gradient map with uh, the gradient editor to have a nice color variety. And then I applied it to a blend node with a max lighten. And works pretty well as a dust filter. Okay, then the greasy joints. So I you know, the joints um, to be like um, to be a bit sticky and maybe uh, to feel like uh, grease spills a bit from them. So I just used uh, the interstices, blurred them, used the level, a directional warp with the stains, a slow blur to break uh, the lines, then another blur textured the lines with the, the dust just to offset them vertically with a transform 2D and with a subtract I have the greasy joints let me show them to you okay it's in the texture group can see them here in action. And what I wanted also is for them to, to have a role in the roughness map, meaning that uh, when you uh, use this option of uh, the greasy, uh, greasy joints, it's more shiny where you have the color, the darker color, it's more shiny as you can see. But we'll see that in a, in a bit. And that's all for the color part. I tried to be uh, fast, but uh, you know, it's not the most complicated uh, thing in, uh, in this material, in this generator. I hope you've been able to uh, catch everything. If not, you, know, you can always ask uh, questions in the comments. Uh, let's study the roughness. For the roughness, I have two um, different normal nodes with different intensities. Well, one is used uh, for the curvature smooth, that is also used in the colors and in the roughness process. I like to create the roughness map based on the normal. So I have a blend here which just blends uh, this normal, which is uh, converted to grayscale with this, uh, this other one, which is much more contrasty, but maybe this one is enough. Well, not at all. Yeah. It works well like that. Here, of course, the uh, invert grayscale because the joints in my case I wanted them to be uh, not glossy at all 
so we have white, a histogram range. The higher the range, the more details you have in the, in the roughness. The lower the range, the less you have details. And I exposed the position to set uh, the roughness intensity. And I just wanted to have a bit of a grainy uh, pass in the roughness. So I just used uh, the planks with a vector warp grayscale and only uh, the veins as the vector map with the levels that gives us a very grainy pass for the roughness. I used the multiply and an opacity of one. And also you have to use tessellation to judge your roughness better. Can be can be nice. And that's it for the roughness. That leaves us with this part here, which is just uh, the rounded borders and the joints. So it's uh, almost the same process as we studied in the um, in the color. So we start by a small blur, a histogram scan to just keep the gaps, a blur, a levels, and that's our rounded borders. sharp borders, rounded borders. And this, uh, this float, this value, is the same also for um, the color, rounded borders. So that's easy. Then we have the joints. Same process, we just keep only the caps and uh, send them to the planks with a max layton. If I play with the joint sides, we see it taking effect here. And it also works uh, for the, the color. Joint height. As you can see here, the same slider does have an effect uh, on the color map. Making this here, you know, the rounded borders and the joints after uh, all the texturing parts is interesting because whatever your pattern is, it will work you will be able to make borders and joints, whether it's a herringbone or a pointe de Hongrie or a, a l'anglaise, any uh, parquet pattern, doesn't matter. So that's, uh, that's nice. Then I wanted to add uh, strong damages with a subtract. Let me show the damages to, to you. Strong damage. Okay, cool. And I didn't want them to be in the color, to affect the color, so I put them only here and they are sent then to uh, the normal, to uh, the height, the roughness. I'm not sure if they are sent to the roughness actually, but that doesn't matter and to the uh, ambient occlusion. Let's see how I did them. The effect is quite strong here, but uh, that's just uh, to demonstrate it. I can still uh, turn down the tessellation. Okay, nice. So it's just a directional warp. Okay. Okay, nice. Let's see what's done, where it comes from. Okay, it comes from the from here. And of course, this is something um, I didn't cover previously. 
So it's just our uh, Perlin noise. Oh yes, I covered this part here, but not this one, I think. So it's just a cloud 2 that goes into a normal because I used a vector warp grayscale. So with uh, our Perlin noise. Then a slope blur. The vector warp goes into the grayscale and the slope. Then a transform to squash, uh, squash down this texture. Levels to keep only small amounts of parts. And uh, a blur. You don't want the effect, this uh, damage effect, to be too sharp. But maybe 0.45 is a bit high. Let's try 0.35. Mm, 0.4. Okay, that's nice. That's it for the strong damage. And here it's just a blend node because um, remember the greasy joints. I wanted to, I wanted them to be subtracted from the roughness in order to have darker, um, not have for them to be dark, darker in the roughness. That way, uh, it, they are a bit shiny. And with uh, with that, our uh, wood series generator is finished. It was maybe sometimes a bit complex, a bit uh, difficult for me to explain and maybe uh, to understand. But at least I covered everything. We saw every node in this uh, in this graph. Uh, we didn't. Um, I didn't talk too much about the generator, but uh, as I said earlier. This will be the subject of another video. Not especially with this generator, but I think we'll make one from scratch. That way it would be much easier to to understand. Let's try to, just before we finish, to change the main color. It's a bit pale. Okay, cool. So that was fun to make, and it's uh, always uh, important for me to make videos like this. As you can see, I uh, create the graphs, I try to optimize them as I record the video. That way you can see uh, a bit more my thought process. And yeah, that was a, a good step for me, for this channel, and I hope for you. Uh, next week will be about uh, almost the same thing, but with metal. I make a metal generator. Uh, we'll have uh, different patterns and different kinds of metals. I wish you a good week. See you soon. Bye bye.